Hello, family. I really do pray that you guys are lifting up the Lord first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, I pray that once you are actually up and your mind is like getting there, that you are lifting up the Lord's name, that you are magnifying him. And again, when you magnify him, anger can't stay, unforgiveness can't stay. You know, Jesus was a front runner of how to lay down his life and to care for others. He became uncomfortable so that we can have. That cross was not comfortable. Those 40 days in the wilderness was not comfortable. Like the life that Jesus lived just so we could live was not comfortable, right? And those of us who consider ourselves Christ followers, I really do pray that we are waking up each day and really putting our ear to the throne and putting our eyes to God's word and learn how can I lay down my life today and extend a helping hand to someone else, even if it does make me uncomfortable. Every day there's something to tackle, but if we are intentional, intentional, of falling behind Christ, following behind Christ, we're in purpose. It's not about how much money you can make or how fly you can look or the nicer things you have, but can you lay down your life and be the hands and feet of Jesus? Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You know, words, our communication with one another, in my family, we always had this this thing of, in our mind, we would always say, you know, have a little narrative voice. If someone didn't answer the phone for us or they're just ignoring me, we never consider that, oh, that person could be having a bad day or that person is just busy. No, it's always a negative thing of, oh, they didn't want to talk to me. I know they saw the phone ringing with my name on it. All just type of craziness. But you know what was the coolest thing? is when I grew up and I realized the pattern that I had adapted, it wasn't until I decided to go against what I had been learned, what I had learned. And I started to actually care about someone. So when I did call and someone didn't answer, I was, I would, you know, I started to say, you know, they're busy. And naturally a prayer would come. A prayer and not of a prayer to answer for them to answer my phone call, but a prayer that their day goes even better than than what than than what you know. Their day goes better. Their flows better. They find peace. They find grace. All this stuff that I would want, I wanted someone else to want. But that happened after I began a relationship with God, and I began to follow after Christ excuse me, I begin to lay down my life even when it doesn't make me comfortable. We, everyone on earth wants to be comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're too comfortable, you're going to miss the opportunity to help someone, to care for someone, to love someone, to communicate with someone. Um, today, I just heard something so amazing and it convicts me. <laughs> And it's something that we also know. But, you know, again, when you don't do it that often, it amazes you, right? So, Pastor Jimmy Evans was talking about, you know, when you communicate with someone, you care. You look at them, which is a sign that shows that you care. And me, you know, for the most part, you know, let's be honest. For the most part, when I'm talking to someone, like when I'm ministering to someone, I'm all ears right but when you're telling me something that i already know or i really don't care to hear am i really all ears then no and i literally i stopped and i just asked the lord today lord today i want to be present and i want to exercise this communication of care you know when i get to work and even though i'm going to hear the same questions about covid I still want to look that person in the eye and answer the questions, you know, because I care, you know. And honestly, 
when we do these things, all these things that the Bible say to do, to care for one another, to lend, to lend a, a lending hand, you are representing Christ. You are representing Christ. So when people see you, they don't just see like, oh, uh, the religious or, or all that stuff. No, they see the things that we get to experience, the relationship that we there that uh that we when we call ourselves Christ followers we're really taking on that that um that representation we really are exercising in our Christ likeness we really are caring we really are long suffering you know all the fruits of the spirit we really are experiencing we're walking out you know and honestly that's what draws people to Christ think about it when you weren't in Christ, but you begin to see someone else or you begin to see how Jesus is moving in your situation, that draw you, that drew you to him. I don't know who on my English today, but that drew you to him. The way he never left and he kept, he kept, he kept calling you. He kept, you know, coming near you. You know, he, the moment you realize that God loved you first, you know, and you look back. And you just remember all these things that had happened. And you were just like, Lord, even when all that, all those things were happening, you were still calling me. You were still thinking of me. What I did or what happened to me, it didn't change what you say about me. It didn't change how you wanted relationship with me. And you know, when we start to exercise those things with people, we learn to forgive I'm not saying be, you know, I'm not saying to put yourself out there to be hurt again. But what I'm saying is when you learn to forgive and you have discernment, discernment helps you know who to lock with and who not to lock with. Yes. So when you learn to forgive and you use your discernment, you can give people a chance who, who needs a chance. Not everyone you come across you should be entangled with, but that's where your discernment comes in. But what I'm saying is people who's supposed to be in your life and they've messed up and you're just like, no, I won't give you a second chance to hurt me. Those people, you're supposed to forgive and you can be the one that shows them, show them the way to Christ. You know, I thank you for forgiving me. Now I've forgiven that person who hurt me. You know, when we come into Christ and we and God starts to give us an understanding heart, you will see how getting healed and whole isn't that hard. Sometimes it can be so painful, but that understanding heart plays a big role in your in your forgiveness and your healing. God can't do anything with bitterness that you won't let go. People always say, "Oh, anger has a hold on me. Bitterness has a hold on to me. Has a hold on me." But in reality, it's you not letting it go because you feel like someone wronged you so bad. I can't. When God looks at you, he doesn't say, oh, you hurt me so bad. You sin constantly over and over again. I can never forgive you. No. He still loves you. He still wants to have communion with you. He still wants to lead you in the right way he still wants to pull his love he wants to overflow your cup even when you sin he's still by your side he's still rooting you on he still says i know the things that i placed in you and they're still there yes life happened but what i placed in you is still there that's the kind of love that we have to show one another when we speak to each other, when we listen to each other, when we're ministering, you know, when we're just being a friend from the heart and I don't need anything back from you, that's a true friend. Jesus didn't say you had to pay him for him to save you. He said you had to believe. That Belief costs you nothing. It's a choice. Are you going to put down what you learned from the world and pick up what God is trying to teach you. It's all about living. Just following the trail that Jesus already blazed. 
the way you talk to people, the way you handle people. And Christ didn't just tolerate us, right? He nurtured us into wholeness. He nurtured us um, into who we are, our identity. He didn't tolerate us. So we should really let go of this tolerating people mentality. I can only tolerate you for this day or I can only tolerate you for this moment and really come out of your own selfishness and see what a person will need because that's what Christ did. He did not tolerate us. He didn't say, oh, for this moment, I'll, I'll, I'll let you do this or I'll, I'll lay, my down, lay my life down for this moment. No, he nurtured us. He came to where we were and he nurtured us to where we need to be. He didn't do it with such hatred or or such a nasty attitude. The reason why you love Jesus so much is because he loved you from the heart. He called you from the heart. He forgave you from the heart. It was nothing that had to be forced on him. He saw what you needed and he laid down his life. So when we're going on in our day, think about that. Think about how God nurtured you. Think about how God loved you. Think about how he saved you. Think about how he forgave you. And lend that hand to someone else without requiring anything. God didn't ask you for a payment or anything. All he asked was that you believed in his son. So it'll cost you nothing to listen to someone when they're speaking. Make eye contact. Listen to them, hear out their hearts. If someone needs a meal, it'll cost you nothing to share yours, you know? It's all about giving from the heart and really following following the, the path that Jesus already blazed for us. You're literally just following a blueprint that was already set out. So I'm at camp, see you guys tomorrow, bye.